Hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> I definitely need to um uh, double check. Hello, hello, hello. How y'all doing? Happy New Year. I know that we need to probably wait a little bit to get some people online. There we go. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Hello, everyone. There we go. All come through. I thought I would just jump on and do a Tuesday Talks Q&A because it's a new year, new me, trying to keep up that consistency. Already know I'm going to have to ruin it next week because um, I will be away because I will be doing a live show. So, um, you know, as long as it's for a good excuse. Um, oh, I love you guys sharing the location of where you are. Happy New Year from Kansas. Hello from Sweden. Happy New Year from Dorset. Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> this always blows my mind. How long have I been doing this? And yet yeah, I'm still like, geeking out. Okay. So first things first, I've got a little bit of admin. Um, I've released a lecture on my course site, um, which I've actually rebranded from Mary Spender U to just Mary Spender School. And um, it's called How I Built My YouTube Channel. And if anyone is interested, it is available. It's in four parts. Um, it can be consumed within an hour and it's $10. Um, and yeah, that's sort of like early bird pricing. Um, if you're a patron, there is a discount. So yeah, check out the link in the description. Secondly, next week, as I mentioned, I have a show in Brighton. There are still a few tickets available. So if you are in Brighton in the UK or if you have friends, um, then please share the show with them. I just realised I should be talking into the camera, not just looking at the channel. Although I do need to also look at the chat. Um, and then I guess there are a few things I want to gauge interest in. So I want to sort of get some like real time feedback um happy new year from germany happy new year from australia happy new year mary from a very wet bristol hi scott um happy new year from the chicago suburbs i love me a chicago suburb um live shows are a great excuse <laughs> yes please matthew Please tell your friends. That'd be great. It's, it's, to be honest, it's my first show. It's my first headline show in Brighton. And the last time I think I performed in Brighton was February 2019, supporting Ariel Posen. Um, and that was <laughs> nice green screen. Yes, it is a lovely green screen, isn't it? Definitely. Um, just like Rick Beato sits in front of a green screen, doesn't he? <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't. I've been in that studio. I promise it's real. Um, Happy New Year from London. Have you enjoyed? Oh, I need to uh, start showing some questions. Here we go. David Bolton. Happy New Year from London. Have you enjoyed the live gigs you did last year? Any stories to share? Any stories to share? I mean, it was just incredible getting back performing. It was nerve wracking. I'm not going to shy away from that. It was exciting at the same time. I, I do feel fortunate that I've had a lot of years of gigging under my belt to be able to even, you know, with a few years off, sort of get back into the swing of things relatively quickly um, and just sort of cope with things that, you know, it's a live situation things go wrong, but you just don't need to necessarily make the audience aware all the time. Um, so yeah, like it was just live and spontaneous and 
Oh, it was such a buzz. The, uh, you know, I see why people go on tour endlessly just for that, uh, you know, high every night. Um, and yeah, I'm not going to do as many shows this year. Not, I mean, I didn't do that many last year um, in the grand scheme of things, but I will probably do the same amount. Um, I don't quite know what to promise or not to promise. Um, but at the moment, the only show in the diary is Brighton on the 12th of January, which is looming so quickly. Um, and yeah. I think Rick has the green screen, you have the fake British accent. <laughs> Very true, Matthew. It's all it's all an act. Um, OK, oh, my gosh, so many questions. Wow, wow, wow. Wait, this is a green screen. No, I sorry. I I do find that sometimes I am too sarcastic where it's actually hard for people to know whether or not um, I'm telling you the truth. Um, but no, it's. Uh, it is it is not a green screen, I promise. I can, I'm not gonna go over there because it's in the background of my videos anyway, but. Um, ooh, I've got my first super chat. Hi, Mary. Uh, greetings from Chicago. Oh, I need to show it on screen. Come on, where is it? Why is it not showing me? There we go, okay. Yes. Hi, Mary. Greetings from Chicago. What do you think of Japanese made Fender guitars? I've got a good story about that, actually. I, gosh, this was early YouTube days where I was very overexcited and just trying to make videos all over the place and couldn't believe that I could justify going to a guitar shop and making a video there um, in like remote parts of England that I'd never been to. I went to Manson's in England and discovered a Fender Aerodyne made in Japan guitar. And I, because of it being short scale, it was so familiar. It was, you know, same scale length as my uh, Vigier GV Rock. And yeah, I still sort of think about it. It was 800 pounds and I couldn't afford it. Um, so I didn't buy it, um, but they're not very easy to come by actually. So, um, so yeah, so there we go. I did go into a shop just before Christmas, Fanatic Guitars in Barcelona, and I was um, uh, buying a, a mono case, a double mono case, which has changed my life. Um, and while I was there, they were discussing a Fender, oh, was it a Squire? Japanese squire? Does that make sense? Am I getting that completely wrong? I feel like it was a Japanese made squire from the 90s, maybe 80s, 90s. And it was phenomenal. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. So there we go. That's what I think about that. Um, okay, can I find this next one? Ooh, thank you so much, John. <laughs> Love the screen pick. Mary, hello from Phoenix, just taking the opportunity to support what you do, waiting for you to have a local gig. I would love to play in Phoenix. You guys know I'd love to play in the US of A. If anyone knows a booking agent that can help me with that, that would be amazing. Info at maryspender.com. It's very hard to find a booking agent. Even when you know that you definitely have people, um, uh, hopefully, coming to see you. And also, sorry if I'm a bit sniffly, but um, just that time of year, isn't it? Uh, Odge UK. Yes, yes, yes. Brighton next week, 12th of January. Um, ooh. See you next Thursday. I'll be on a time this time. Camberwell, 86. <laughs> Amazing. It will be good to see you again. Um, wait, has someone just added Adam Neely? Does that mean Adam Neely is in the chat? Yes! <laughs> Yo! <laughs> K 
come on, Adam, get with the super chat, you know? <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, yeah. Hello, Adam. Nice to see you. To see you. Nice. Um, I'm really just like super happy. I will say I did, and obviously I just need to, you know, take time to edit and, and make sure that everything I want to come out of the interview has come out in the right way. Um, but I did my first Tuesday Talks interview of this year, super long form. The long form version will be up on Nebula. The short form versions will be on YouTube, um, all the sort of different topics and everything. And um, yeah, it was uh, it was a real buzz. I'd f forgotten how good it was to, yeah, just be talking candidly about um, YouTube, about music, about creation. It was great. So hopefully, hopefully it will um, come together nicely and then be up on the channel soon. <laughs> Mary, please be my future ex-wife. Ah, <laughs> such a nice compliment, but also um no 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 um scott hello scott you're going to make it to austin this year i don't know i don't know but with how how last year went with, full of surprises um uh i can i won't say no i've definitely got one trip to the us booked already some of you might know uh what's happening in april this year um, but, uh, Austin, I, oh God, I've been promising that, haven't I, for a while. Um, but Scott, I hope you're good and happy new year and hopefully speak to you soon. Alonzo, happy new year, Mary. How many guitars do you take with you on stage? At the moment, the way I'm traveling, it's very minimalist. So two, um, one electric, one acoustic, and that's it. And yeah, next, yeah, next week I've got, yeah, it's a bit of a fly rig. These are solo shows. And by solo shows, I mean solo show because it's only one next week. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's just a simplified rig at the moment. And basically, I guess the, the reason I put myself in the position to do a few shows again was I realized I'd never done a headline show alone until um, October 31st in Bristol. So I just wanted to put myself under pressure and get back performing live. So hiring out the venues myself, which is very independent. And it's kind of to run through some of the songs in a live, um, live capacity for the album. And so that's why I kind of like have to sort of like shy away again and just get the album finished because otherwise it will just be one of those things and it'll be a, a long run uh, running joke where it'll be like yeah that album where is it who knows um so yeah so there we go um david uh hey man what music genre did you not like when you were young but now you like have a different appreciation for happy new year Ooh. Pop music. Don't judge me. I feel the judgment. Pop music. I love pop music. I love it so much. I did not love it as a teenager. I loved rock music and I loved um, indie and hmm, who else did I, you know, I loved Blink-182, Green Day, Muse. I was very into sort of heavier things than pop music. And I feel like the pop music now and I don't mean like pop music completely in the charts. I don't really listen to the charts, but yeah, to be honest, I've been listening to like, also to improve my Spanish, I've been listening to really, really popular artists like Rosalia and Bad Bunny. Yeah, I know. I just said Bad Bunny. Um, and God, they are so groovy. <laughs> and Rosalia, like, oh my God. Oh, I, I should call her La Rosalia. Um, what a producer as well. 
and engineer and songwriter and she's like she is next level stuff like musical genius level and I think she's completely underrated in uh just obviously there's a bit of a barrier because it's um songs in Spanish dear someone hello dear someone David, have you heard of medieval versions of songs on YouTube? Yes, I have. I have. Um, Adam, would you love your fans if we were all worms? Yes, no discrimination. <laughs> that is a bizarre, <laughs> bizarre question. Um, Oh, Joel. Yes, absolutely. I just mentioned um, that I've just filmed, just come off filming uh, my first interview of this year. Did I do any last year? Or was it all 2020? We oh, no, I did some in 2021. And then I feel like 2022 was a bit too all over the place, but maybe I'm muddling up all my years. I definitely did a lot in 2021. Um, so yeah, bringing back Tuesday Talks interviews, but slightly in a different format. Um, you know, trying to up my level of production each time and really make videos that are consumable and interesting and topical and educational this year, you know. Jean, hello Mary, my favourite name. Your new, book, your new booking agent needs to get you to Southern California. Love seeing you. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too. I don't have a booking agent. That's the problem. So we need to find me a booking agent. Info at maryspender.com. Um, yes. So just I I need to get to Rick Beato's level of this, where it's just like reminding of things that you might be interested in down in the description. Um, how I built my YouTube channel is a new lecture up on my course site. It's available for ten dollars can be consumed uh, within an hour. Um, I've had a lot of lovely feedback already from Patreon people and then also doing a Brighton show, Brighton UK, next Thursday, 12th of January. Um, it should be really fun. I'm really excited. My hometown, you know. Um, okay, next question. My goodness. A lot of super chats. Thank you so much. Stephen Russell. Hi, Mary. Did you see my suggestion of climbing to a high point once a month, wherever you are, and singing and playing at the top? Pref pre pre <laughs> Preferably with a friend. Take picture or video, create a monthly calendar. Ooh, I hadn't seen that suggestion. Um, could I do that every month? How many high points are there that I could feasibly take a guitar up and cameras and a friend. Um, but I will keep that in mind, Stephen. I will keep it in mind. I'll add it to the ideas list. <laughs> Frederick, have you ever played a Duesenberg guitar? If so, what is your opinion? When did I play? So I've never owned one and I feel like Pete Honore introduced me to no I definitely played Duesenberg in like 2017 2018 Nam and really love the look of them really do and then I feel like I did did I do an Anderton's video or I, I definitely was mucking around with one at Anderton's so um I won't say I am super familiar with them so I'll be honest and say my opinion is that I thought that they were great at the time, but I haven't, I wouldn't be able to tell you which specific, my goodness, can I even talk today? Specific model. Um, so yeah. Uh, Matthew, call us along. What's that guitar behind you? <laughs> this, this old thing. Um, this is my Epiphone. Some of you might remember. Ooh, I might have published the video almost two years ago to the day. Um, when I was um, daily, which I haven't done this year or last year. Um, and it's from, it's actually from 1937. People have corrected me since I uploaded the video. I thought it was 1936, but then through the serial number investigation and everything, um, 1937. 
and yeah it's now in the studio but obviously this is just a green screen that i can't even hello like i'm holding a tiny guitar okay mary it's been a long day <laughs> um please not bad bunny i'm so sorry but i have to learn i have to feel i i have to i have to learn like song lyrics so that i can like i know that maybe you have other recommendations for me to learn lyrics too but i don't know pop music i love it bit of reggaeton to someone uh congrats on the live performances can't wait till the album's out me too me too thank you blimey hello happy new year happy new year indeed my goodness does ev does everyone um are they are you all keeping up your new year's resolutions i've actually been keeping up my news resolution i mean it's only day three but that's not bad is it david how do you feel about musicals any favorites Ooh, ooh, this is a good topic and something um we're definitely working on because i i love musicals but i grew up really adoring them and I don't adore all of them. I could definitely rank my favorites. Um, just that I need to, I need to make a video about them because I think, you know, some of them have a bad rap. I, I mean, you know, the popularity of something like Hamilton blowing up and sort of giving Broadway and the West End a resurgence um, is amazing, especially, and, and touring companies too. Um, but yeah, I, I love a musical. I'd love to, uh, oh, the last one I think I saw in, before everything happened, I feel like it was like February, 2020, when I got tickets, uh, was Waitress um, in London with Sarah Bareilles being the lead. Um, so she just, you know, had to write it and then also star in it. What an overachiever. Um, God, Sarah Bareilles is someone I definitely want to get on the channel one day, big dream big dream she is amazing um yeah so waitress that blew me away burst into tears obviously um it was yeah amazing seeing her do her thing and and see it all come to life and yeah um so i love musicals there we go that's my answer giuliano Hello, Mary, when are you coming to play in Brazil? Oh, I don't know. I wish I had a definitive, definitive answer for touring. I was speaking with a friend yesterday who's going on tour next year and I was just so jealous. I will admit I was jealous. I want to be able to be like, hey guys, here's my world tour. Um, what 90s, 2000s pop do you like now? Thanks, man. Okay, have you listened to, uh, oh my goodness, is it just self-titled? Justin Timberlake's first album? If you re-listen to the production on that album, it is incredible. <laughs> um, so yeah, I love a bit of Justin Timberlake. Um, what else from the 90s and 2000s holds up? I mean, Katy Perry's first album came out in what two thousand seven. Does that count? I think that I think that counts. That's a great record. You're all gonna you're all gonna unsubscribe from me admitting the truth, aren't you? Um, <laughs> an interesting answer indeed. Um, <laughs> Mary's bringing sexy back. <laughs> I'm going to write a musical called Waiter. <laughs> My New Year's resolution is to procrastinate. I'll start tomorrow. Thank you, Martin. That <laughs> that's very funny. Um, yeah, I actually need to upload my proof of sweat from today. People are mentioning that. Um, did you guys know I have a, a second channel 
that I've uploaded to, what, like four times, called Proof of Sweat. Um, I did realize like Proof of Sweat and Tuesday Talks take the same voice where it's like Tuesday Talks and it's like Proof of Sweat. And I don't know who this alter ego is, but it's definitely someone. Um, <laughs> Ooh, Joel, Andy Fairweather, low, was superb on Jules Holland on New Year's Eve. Defo would make a good interview for 2023. Ooh. Do you guys think I could one day be like the YouTube version of Jules Holland? Like have a whole studio, have loads of live musicians, do a New Year's Eve special, have like my pals come on and the pals be like Katie Tunstall or God, who else? I mean, if, like David Byrne or I don't know, like where it's just like, oh, they're just like appearing. Leon Bridges. Oh my God. He's not a friend. He will be one day. <laughs> my mate, John Mayer, you know, get him on. Oh, John, can you just come and play, play on the New Year's Eve show? That's what we could get to one day. Can you tell I'm exhausted? It's, um, it's quite late here. <laughs> Ooh, do yourself a favor and try a Duesenberg, Phonic, and a Paloma. I own both models in white and have never had a guitar that is that playable and inspiring. Wow, thanks for the recommendation, Frederick. I'll make note of that. Duesenberg, Phonic, and a Paloma. Absolutely. I mean, that's really all it comes down to, isn't it? It's just like, whatever guitar you have, no matter what it costs, does it make you smile does it excite you do you want to pick it up do you want to play it i was playing a guitar that i'm going to make a video on this week that i've had for a while i just i just need to make a few changes um and it's just exquisite it's just exquisite and yeah i can't wait to share it with you actually aubrey hello <laughs> Hello, hello, hello. Happy New Year. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Jacob Clark has asked, have you ever met Justin Hawkins from The Darkness? Might make a good interview as he also does YouTube. Oh, I am aware. I am aware. I would um, love to have Justin on he's doing such a good job on youtube and he's really like isn't he uploading like every day or something it's like whoa <laughs> um that's a lot it's a lot of work um so yeah i i mean i'll be honest i dm'd him and i don't think he's seen it yet so hey justin hawkins if you're out there if you guys can all just swarm his YouTube channel and be like, Mary Spenner wants to interview you. That would be really helpful. Okay. Let's, um, let's do that because I, I think I probably, you know, going back to the rock music of my, um, my youth, um, the darkness, I literally have a memory of sitting in front of my, cause I only had a tape player for quite some time. Like even when the CDs were out, like I only still had a tape player and had to get all my albums on tape. And, uh, um, uh, believe in a thing called love. Why am I literally, um, and that whole first album, I just rewound and rewound and rewound and played and then rewound and to try and learn the guitar solos and the opening. I don't want to get copyright striked. <laughs> um, so yeah, to actually interview him would be kind of crazy. It'd be crazy. Okay, where are we? Sorry, I've just gotten completely sidetracked. When did guitar become your first love over piano? Ooh, yeah, I've been, I have been learning piano again and realizing that, yeah, guitar definitely took my breath away. Um, 
I think as soon as I started playing guitar, it was just so fun and I had no pressure on it. Whereas with piano, viola, violin, singing, um, and then, you know, just classical music, GCSE, and then A-level, and then studying at university, it just a lot of pressure um, just from that sort of system. So guitar was, you know, no exams, no lessons, um, self-taught, just wanting to play in bands, really. Just wanting to be a song songwriter. I think that is always the underlying underlying thing. Um, okay, I'm going to start wrapping up. David Brooks. Okay, one more and that's it. Were you a Guitar Hero fan and what are your thoughts when kids say they want to learn music because of the game? Oh, I love it when people, you know, learn want to learn music because of something like that where you're like, oh, no one would have imagined that would encourage people or, you know, no one a hundred years ago could um, feasibly think about that sort of thing being invented. Um, I never really played it. I, d I don't think I... I I don't know whether this is like a good thing or a bad thing. I think I feel like it's good because there's only so much time in my day for all my hobbies, but I never really got into gaming. I think I had a brief stint playing Sims when I was a teenager, but yeah, gaming wasn't then what it is now. And I don't think I would ever stop gaming if I got into it. So I really try and avoid it. I remember, I think the last time I gamed, gamed, <laughs> um, was with Rob Scallon. And his wife. So, um, and they they are pros. They're amazing. Um, Tamara, I mean, she streams her gaming online, and they they were just so good. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, and everything. So, yeah, I just don't think I'm. I don't think I'm cut out for it. Um, and right now, do I even own a TV? No, no, no TV at the moment. So definitely no gaming console. I mean, obviously you could do it on your laptop or computer or whatever, but no, not for me. I've got enough on my plate already. Um, Okie dokie. Right. I think we're all... Oh, last one. Last one. Gwyn, Happy New Year, Mary, and to all. Yeah, Happy New Year. Um, so uh, YouTube in general has uh, left up... Um, uh, sort of d divided up and tidied up YouTube in general. So at one point when the, this is really boring, I don't know why I'm sharing this, when live streams were shown on the main page of in amongst all the other videos, it was a bit confusing. Um, so now they've segmented them and they're in their own little page. So I will be leaving this up um, for you all to watch. Um, or if you've only just tuned in, you can re-watch it. Um, but last, last super chat. Thank you so much to everyone who has contributed. It really does make a difference. So thank you. Um, and be sure to check out the course. Well, the lecture in the description below. And Brighton people, Brighton, Brighton, UK, calling all Brighteners. Um, come to my show next Thursday. How about a collab in Spanish with the great lyricist George Drexler? Jorge? Ooh, okay, my pronunciation will be, um, well, I, I would need to do my research. My goodness, I need to be educated on um, everyone talented in Spain and South America and anywhere Spanish speaking. So happy new year, guys. Thank you so, so much for joining me. So many of you. <laughs> um, Yeah, okay. I'll say over and out. Happy New Year, and I will be seeing you very soon. We've actually got a really great video coming on Sunday, and hopefully something coming a little bit before that. But otherwise, um, have a good evening, and yeah, Happy New Year. <laughs>